Hey guys, so I use quite a few browser extensions for uh, my work as a React.js developer and I wanted to share some of the ones I found pretty useful. Now I am using Chrome, but a lot of these are also available on other browsers like Firefox. So the first one is called Octolinker and this is specifically for when you're browsing on GitHub. You'll notice there's now this little pink icon um, next to all import statements, or in this case, uh, these are export statements. And what they are is it provides the links. So now I can click on any of these. All these imports, or exports in this case, are links. And I can just easily browse their code base now by clicking on it. So for example, I'm looking at the source code for this project. And I want to see what are they, where are they getting this with Apollo thing. So I can click on this. Um, and it'll actually navigate me to wherever this code is. So now I'm here, I'm like, okay, I can see all the imports up here and I can be like, oh, I've never heard of this project called React. I click on that um, and then it takes me to the GitHub page for React. So it's very nice for just navigating code bases and you can see where packages are coming from, both relative links, so it'll navigate you within the project and then also uh, uh, just like packages, third-party packages they're using that'll link to the GitHub pages. Um, so highly recommend that. The next one is the React official dev tools. So you'll see a little icon up here um, and it says this page is under development uh, of React and what it adds is a little tab called React um, when you're, whenever you're interacting with a website that has React. So in this case, I have this little website that uh, uses React. So I can look at all these React components, whatnot. And then I can click on them and I can see the props that they get passed in. And uh, if I want to, I can, for example, click on this input, um, head over here, and I can also search. So input, uh, and I can see, all right, here's a checkbox. Um, checked is false. I can just click on, I think it was this one, nope, that one, there you go. And you can see as the values change, um, they'll update over here and whatnot. Um, so this is super helpful, but it's not only for just your own development. You can actually use this on production websites. So for example, here is Dropbox. Um, you'll notice the icon changes a little bit and it's like, hey, this page is using a production version of uh, React. So we, what we can do is we can inspect. I can come over here and inspect this field if I wanted to. Um, click on that. Um, it's going to connect and it'll take us to this input field. We can see the value um, as I'm typing and you can kind of see the value as it updates as I typed. Um, but more interesting, you can also see people that have not updated their React. So for example, here's the New York Times. Uh, you'll notice the icon's a little different this time. If we click on it, it's like, hey, this page is using an outdated version of uh, React, so please upgrade. So that's kind of funny. Um, but you can kind of toy around and look at people's sites um, and the React code that they wrote. Now you'll notice everything is these T's, and that's because the code is basically uh, transpiled. So it's not the exact source code, um, but you can kind of you know, click around and see what's going on. Uh, the next thing is uh, Apollo. So I use GraphQL a lot and there is a dev tools for it. So if I click on this right here, so this page uses GraphQL and I loaded all these items using GraphQL. So I can see um, in my cache right now, everything that is stored. So here are all the to do's. So uh, I can see my first item is probably up here. I can see the ID, whether it's completed or not, and what the value of it is in the cache. And I can see the root query. So I did to do's and then the mutation. I can see all the queries that were run. So for example, uh, we can see what it was. And if I wanted to, I could run it in graphical myself. So here's me running it. I can update some values. Maybe I only want to see the ID, run that, only get the IDs back. Um, and then here I can see some of the mutations that were run. Um, I could say add to do, hit enter, um, and we can see my add to do was added to the list. So it's pretty nice. You can kind of see what's going on with your GraphQL application. Sometimes it's a little bit buggy, um, 
but overall it's pretty cool and you can kind of uh, when you need to debug GraphQL stuff this is my go-to now I don't think it works on other sites besides just localhost which is a bummer uh, but it is what it is uh, another one which I'll just mention I don't really use this anymore I used to use uh, redux a lot um, and they have a dev tools and their dev tools is actually really nice uh, this is one of the best uh, dev tools for redux uh, I re really recommend it if you're using redux I don't really use redux anymore so uh, I don't have a need for it and I guess I could un uninstall it but I still have it here um, so the next one is a JSON formatter so this is doesn't have to be specific the one I use um, let's see it's called the JSON view um, and you can see it just prettifies the JSON and then it adds these little tags where I can just form or uh, fold so I can see all right what's going on with this and I can kind of just like quickly look through some data so right here's a big JSON file for a reddit page um, and I can just kind of click through and I, I really like it for being able to look at JSON because it makes it pretty and I love the folding feature um, and so that's about it for specific developer ones so uh, another one that I have that's kind of interesting is a Vim plugin for Chrome. So it is called CVim. And this is really nice for just navigating around pages. So right now I am pushing J and K on my computer. And what it does is it goes up and down on the page. Um, and you can just like, here's me hopping to the top and bottom. Um, and then one that I like the best is I can push F and I can see all the links um, on the page. Um, and then I can type any of these letters and then I'll immediately click that link so for example if I want to go to this article look at the comments I would type BD um, and then here I am looking at that article so it's really nice and then I can do shift H to go back on the page and I really like this and it's pretty much how I navigate when I'm doing any kind of web browsing is through that instead of really with a mouse um, and then lastly I have just some misc things that are nice. Uh, this one is called momentum. So every time I open a tab, it'll tell me the time. It has a cool picture. Um, it has a little inspirational quote at the bottom. You can even add uh, what your main focus and stuff. And this is just kind of like a nice little tab opener and to keep you focused. Um, and then also I have a uh, password manager called LastPass here. And then here is um, you block for this blocks advertising and tracking scripts, all kinds of stuff that are nasty. And you can also get rid of specifically like just elements on the page permanently um, when you go back to sites or just uh, in general block out things you don't want. So I really like that. So yeah, I'm also using TubeBuddy, but that's kind of YouTube specific. That kind of gives you like YouTube analytics and whatnot. But yeah, so those are the extensions that I use. Um, let me know in the comments below if there's any I'm missing and that you'd recommend. Um, or let me know what your favorite Chrome extension is or browser extension in general. And I'll be adding links to all these in the description below if you want to install any of them.